Hello, Dataflow fans. All right, today I want to talk to you about how to capture change data in a data flow. Um, as with the other videos, this data flow video will work both in Azure Data Factory and in Azure Synapse. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you can look for data that's coming in from your sources and compare that against your target data so that you're only bringing in data that was changed. This can be used for uh, change data patterns, can be used for incremental patterns. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create a signature or a fingerprint of the rows, and then I'm going to compare that from my lake file. I'm going to compare that against the data that's already landed in the SQL database. Now, if you look at the screen, I have a uh, completed version of this already. Uh, I'm going to show you this completed, the final product here, but then I'm also going to go back and we'll start from scratch and we'll build one of these brand new, and I'll walk you through all the steps to do that. All right, so let's let's talk about this. Now, at the top, I have my new file coming in. This is the name of my source's new file. This is a CSV file of uh, movies data. So it's text delimited, which means that the projection has to be set. Otherwise, it's all string. It's very important when you're using hashing to create a signature or a fingerprint, which is how I'm doing that. I'm using SHA-2. You can use other hashing functions if you like. But when you're hashing, the data type should match so that you don't get a different hash. Now, because this is a text limit of file, um, you need to set the projection, otherwise it'll be all string. I use data inference from Data Factory to do that by using the um, detect data type. It's important though to also set the default format in some cases, because in my case, the columns that I needed to set at the bottom, the year rating and Rotten Tomato are, are small numbers. And so they came in as shorts because the, the numbers are, the, the ratings are, you know, on like a one to 10 scale or something like that. And the years obviously are just, you know, recent years. So what you can do is under numeric whole number, under default format, you can tell Data Factory that when you try to infer this data to use an integer, that way it'll match the, the data types of the target database, which in this case are integers. And by the way, throughout this video, if I explicitly call it Data Factory, I do not mean to. I'm still stuck in Data Factory land, so I mean to say that it's Data Flows who work in Data Factory or Synapse. That is my caveat as I make that mistake throughout the video. When you load um, into the existing table or you bring the data in from the existing table, uh, in this case, this uh, data set I'm using here for existing table is my SQL movies. It's um, those movies that are coming from the file with some changes, some, uh, some minor differences already landed in SQL database. You'll see that the projection is coming from the database schema, and now this projection matches the projection from the incoming um, lake file. So that's very important to do that first. And I'm, I was mentioning this as a sync as well, because at the end, when, when this is all done, we're only gonna sync the new rows, the rows that have changed, okay? And we're gonna do that by using the exact same data set. All right, all we're doing here is we're just saying, hey, this is the table I'm loading. Make sure that the the rows coming in are not already there. That's all we're doing. So in both of these streams, uh, both of these different sources will have different streams attached to it. We're going to create signatures or fingerprints. So I'm using SHA-2. I'm setting it as 256. And I'm using this special function within the data fact, the, there we go again, the data flow expression language, uh, which will give me the value of every column in that row. That's what columns does. So what I'm doing is I'm hashing across the entire row. So this is a signature of that entire row. You do not need to do it that way. If you only have certain columns, the columns you want to choose to use for your um, matching to check to see if that row already exists, essentially this is what your primary keys would be. Think about it that way. You can put those in here. So I can say only um, hash on movie and title, just an example. And that'll be fine. That's going to create the fingerprint on that. Just make sure you do the same a column choices on both the uh, both the sources so that you get a match. I'm going to go back to using columns. I'm going to use that function here. All right. Now the row signature at the bottom is going to do the exact same thing, so that we're getting the same um, hash. Then all you have to do is just do an exists and make sure that the uh, incoming fingerprint does not exist in the target table that you're going to be writing to, and that's coming in from this source here. Anything that doesn't match comes out, and that ends up to be your sync. All right, and that is going to then write to that same data set, the SQL movies. Okay, that's how it's going to work. Let's go ahead and build this. Let's go to new data flow. If you're in ADF, it's under factory resources. If you're in Synapse Analytics, it's under develop, the develop category. 
Uh, I'm just going to call this, I'm going to leave it as data flow one because I'm not going to save this. This is just for this demonstration purpose. New source. Okay, so we said that we're going to have a lake file come in. This is a delimited file. Um, this is my movies file right here. Now, notice the projection is all strings because it's a uh, delimited text file. So let's go ahead and let's ask data factory to import that projection. I'm sorry, to detect the data type. And I didn't mean to say factory. Uh, Synapse will work just fine. But I want to define that default format so that it doesn't guess that the whole the numeric whole number is being short. I want it to be integer. I'm going to set integer for my default. I'm going to say detect data type. I'm going to let that cook in the background. While that's baking, I'm going to come over here into my source 2. Source 2 is going to be the um, database I'm going to write to, which is SQL Movies. The projection is coming from that database schema, so that is already set, and we're good to go there. Let's go back here, and this is still, uh, let's see, we are, yep, actually it is done. Let me close that, and we have the right uh, projection, so we're good to go. Let's do a derived column. Derived column is where we're going to build a new column, which is going to be our hashing column, okay? Let's call it fingerprint. And I'm not even going to use the expression builder because I know I just need a uh, SHA-2, 256 of every column. Boom, good. Let's actually copy that because I'm lazy. Let's go down here and let's also do a derived column down here. This is going to uh, generate the other uh, fingerprint. Let's call this fingerprint one. Paste, good. Now, I, I do want to help to teach you some good practices, so I'm going to go back. I'm not going to be too lazy. Let me call this um, signature two. How about signature um, existing? How's that? And this one we'll call a signature new. There we go. Source two is going to be, we'll call this existing database, existing DB. And then this one we will call as new data. All right, so now we've got every row is going to have its fingerprint associated with it. Let's compare it. Let's make sure that it does not exist. We're going to say exists, does not exist. The right hand stream is going to be the bottom one, signature existing. The comparison is going to be on the uh, fingerprints. So we're going to say fingerprint and fingerprint. So now we can add the sync at the end. We're going to sync right back to SQL movies. Very simple, right? Very easy to, to build these patterns for incremental or for change data loading. Uh, let's test it out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, new data. This is going to be, let me actually, by the way, here's a good point. Debug settings. I have about 10,000 rows in uh, the database and in the source file. I think the database might have more. I'm not sure, but we'll find out. So I'm going to say 10,000. I'm going to increase the sampling, essentially, the limits for the debug settings so that we can see that we're not bringing all the rows. We are actually excluding the ones that already exist, okay? So let's take a look at what's existing in the, uh, the new data coming in. This is the data landing in the lake. Let's have a look at what we have there, and then we'll take a look at the database source in just a minute as soon as this comes up. Now you see that it says 100 would be insert because there's no updating here, but it's only showing 100 because that's the limit for the preview pane, the actual preview of the data on the screen. The total number of records in the file is 9,114, a little bit less than 10,000. Now let's go to the existing DB and let's do a data preview on that. And let's see what we have in um, that one. And then when this is done, we'll look at the, the hashes and then we'll see that we have the rows being eliminated, the existing rows being eliminated throughout the rest of the flow. Okay, so my SQL database does have some differences in it. It has some newer movie titles in it. Even though these are fake, I made these up, but that's all right. And the total is 9,128, so a slightly different number of rows, a few more in the database. The signatures now, let's take a look at that. Data preview and refresh. And then we should see all those rows uh, with the uh, additional signature fingerprint column um, showing up on the display as well. All right, uh, there's the fingerprint, and so let's just look at this first one. So I'm not sure if I have these in the database. Let's take a look at maybe um, about Trip to the Moon, 1902 is 9F809. Let's go down here to this signature existing. Let's take a look at the data on the existing database. Trip to the Moon, 1902, there it is, 9F8090, yada, yada. Oh, there we go. So that should be just fine. Okay, let's check the exist. Now the exist is going to then take out the um, uh, the, the rows that are duplicate and will just give us the ones that don't exist. 
By the way, as the words came out of my mouth, I realized that I should have also put out this is great for deduping as well. So deduping, looking for change data, incremental patterns, all that, same exact thing. Um, this is the technique to use for that, a technique to use for it. You could always just use an exist of the actual data in the columns itself. Hashing, I just find to be a much more convenient way to do it. And um, here we see we have 98 rows. So of all those, only 98 um, came through as being different, including that 1902 when I was showing you is not here in the list. So that's how you perform some change data patterns and data flow in ADF and Synapse. I'm getting better at that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.